Well, I've just completed my first three months of astrophotography. I gotta say I'm pretty excited. Now, it all started off with the Andromeda Galaxy. I've been a photographer for quite a while. It's been a hobby of mine my entire adult life. But I was looking online and I saw a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy and I thought to myself, I have to capture that. And that's where it all started. When I saw that first picture of the Andromeda Galaxy, I decided I really had to get a photograph of that, but I didn't have any gear for it. So the first thing I did, and this was back in December, is I took a camera, just put it on a tripod, aimed it up at the sky, and I took a whole bunch of two second subs, stitched them all together, I think it was 200 subs, and at the end of it, I was able to get a small little smudge on the camera, a small smudge where the galaxy was, and I was excited. At that moment, I knew I had to go pursue this and try to get something a little bit better. So I got myself a telescope and I got myself an Acromat. I think it's the Skywatcher Star Travel 102. I think that's what they call it. It's an Acromatic telescope, meaning it's not for photography. I just wanted to see space at that point. And being here in the middle of the pandemic, it was really hard to find telescopes. So when I found a pretty cheap telescope that I could get delivered, I went for it. And that changed everything. Once I was able to see things closer up in more detail, I was determined to get some better photographs. My second purchase then was a Skywatcher EQM35 equatorial mount. This now enabled me to track the sky. I was able to follow the sky and the target that I was shooting to get longer exposures. So I put my camera on top of that mount and I aimed up at the Andromeda Galaxy and I got a pretty good photograph, but I realized I wanted more. So my next purchase was a Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED. Now that's an apochromatic telescope and that really enabled me to start taking the photographs I wanted to take. Now here is the Andromeda Galaxy that I was able to capture with that telescope. This is my very first deep sky object and I was quite proud of it. The second target I wanted was the Orion Nebula. It's really a pretty easy target to capture. It's bright in the sky, it's easy to find, but it might just be the most incredible thing you're ever gonna see in outer space. So I got very excited for that one. I targeted it a couple times and that's where I learned that focus is everything. Spent a whole night shooting that target, bring it inside to process it, and find out that it's out of focus and that whole night is ruined. So I went after the uh, Orion Nebula. Again, very proud of this image. Here's what I got. Before I go to the next target, I've got to say that I have a pretty big advantage because I've been working with photography for most of my adult life. In fact, Photoshop and Lightroom are programs that I've used for as long as I can remember. Now with astrophotography, the processing is half the battle. Half the battle is trying to capture the target, but then you've got another 50% of the work left as you go in to process it. So having a strong background in Photoshop and in Lightroom, that really, really helped me out. The other thing that I did was that I watched countless videos on YouTube. I've probably seen every astrophotography video ever made, so I came into this hobby with a lot of knowledge and a lot of background photography skill, and that really helped me to capture these targets a lot faster than I think I would have otherwise. All right, my next target was the Rosette Nebula. The Rosette Nebula was the first target I had to use my go-to mount to find. There was no real easy way to find it in the night sky, so I let my go-to mount get me there, and then I just had to trust that I was in the right spot. Because when I take the photograph, it's such, the nebula is so dim, you really don't see it very well in the back of your camera, so you just have to trust you're there. Uh, for me, the, the key was the star pattern. There's six stars right in the heart of the Rosette Nebula, and when I see those in the back of my camera, I knew I was in the right spot. So the Rosette Nebula was a fun target because it was really a challenging, challenging target. In fact, once I did capture it, the uh, processing for that one was the hardest one up to this point. But here's what I got, and I was really quite proud of this one too. After the Rosette Nebula, I had to go for the Horsehead. The Horsehead Nebula is an incredible looking nebula, but this one I learned you just need a lot of acquisition time. 
So I think it took three or four days actually getting the data for this target. And when I started to process it, it really wasn't coming out very well. So I was getting frustrated, but with enough nights of getting the data from the outside, I was able to come up with something pretty good. Here is my horse head nebula. Now this is my last target for my first three months and it almost killed me. This thing was tough and this is Thor's helmet. So I went for the Thor's helmet nebula. Again, I had to let my uh, go-to mount get me to the target. It's really close to Sirius, so it's not too hard to find, but it's such a dim, dim nebula and I'm using a 72 millimeter telescope. So I really didn't have the tools I needed to get this, this target, but I'm still pretty pleased with what I got. I had to do a lot of cropping and a lot of processing to get this to work. But here is my Thor's head nebula. Now my last target is the moon. Everyone has to shoot the moon at some point. I probably shot the moon a hundred times in my first three months because it's such an easy target. It's easy to focus on. Really, it's a good way to practice astrophotography because it's such an easy target. It's up in the sky at least half of the month. But here's the moon and I took this shot actually through my Acromat, that first telescope that I bought, I took the moon. Now it did have some color fringing but nothing that you can't fix with post-processing in Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. So here is my moon. All right, three months are in the book and I'm very pleased with what I've done so far. I can't wait to see what's coming in the future. Unfortunately, I know that a lot of money is gonna get spent in the future because you get to a point when you realize you need to upgrade some of your gear. For example, I have a 72 millimeter telescope, which is great for what I've done so far, but now we've got the galaxy season coming up and it's just not enough reach to get what I need. So I'm sure down the road, I'll be getting myself another telescope. I'm gonna probably invest in some more filters, I'll need a dedicated astrophotography camera. This is one expensive hobby, but it is a blast. You'll find that when you look on your phone app, in fact, I'm using, I think it's called Clear Outside, and you see that there's gonna be a cloudless night and that the moon's not gonna be a problem, you're almost always getting ready to set up a shot in your backyard. It becomes an obsession, but it is a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along today. Hopefully I'll have some more photographs for you here in the near future. I'm also taking care of some landscape and some nature photography as well. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. I'm trying to put up a video every couple of weeks, but thanks for coming. I'll see you guys next time.